Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at searchable drop-down lists. So the video is going to be in two sections as such. Um, mostly we're going to be firstly looking at how to create a searchable drop-down list and at the end there we're going to be looking at how you can create multiple drop-down lists. So you'll see as we move through this video um, and we do the first search down drop-down list, that searchable drop-down list, uh, you'll see obviously the limitations that it could have in its default form uh, and we'll just then show you how you can use that if you want to be having multiple drop-down lists uh, within your uh, report. So the basic formula or not formula fun setup we have for today is we've got a report sheet where we're going to be showing um, obviously the multiple drop-down lists and then we've got master data what sits behind that. So master data is just a customer and company column and we've format this into a table which you can see by obviously if I click into it, well, the table options here, and you scroll down, and you can see also you've got that corner formatting there to show you that it is actually a table. And we can see the details for the table is this is called, it doesn't quite fit on the page, but it's called, oh, there you go, it's called ta customer table. Uh, so that's what we'll be referencing for that. It's also worth noting, I've just put the website on here of uh, generatedata.com. This is where I've generated this random data that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. And it's also a great resource for you if there's other data you want to generate. It's all completely just random, so there's obviously no actual data being used. And it's just a really good resource for getting that ra like generating random data for when you're trying uh, tutorials such as this or when you're just doing your own work. Because uh, obviously appreciate these formulas need data for you to actually be able to try them in the first place. So the first thing we'll start by doing is building out obviously the validation prep uh, in column F here. So this is where we'll gradually build the formula to show you how the dynamic list is going to be formed. And we'll be using uh, data validation uh, to provide the drop down list in the report sheet. So without further delay, we'll jump straight into it, uh, although one delay is uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you're notified of our future videos. And also if you do enjoy the content in this video, please do hit that like button. Uh, it's obviously only not only appreciated by me, but it's also very beneficial for the channel as well. And if it is your first time checking out the channel, thank you very much for stopping by. So here we go, let's jump straight in. So the first part we're going to do is a search. So we're going to take the value, what we've got in our report sheet, and we're then going to use that to search our customer list to pick out all the values that match our um, in criteria that were invented. So what I'll just start off with is I'll just put in here some initial, initial, or <laughs> initial initials. So two characters that could be the part of our search. So we want to look for a customer and so far we put in BE, so we want to pull back all the customers that have BE within their name. So back in our master data in our validation prep, we can start entering our formula. So we're going to do equals search, and we'll open brackets. And the first thing we need to do is obviously search for that value. So it's going to go back into that, into that customer sheet. So for us, it's report B8. Once I go back into the master data, let's get rid of that. Uh, I then need to select our customer table. So that is just column A. And as you know, if you just hover at the top of that column of a table, you'll get this uh, downward arrow, select that, and then obviously it'll select the column uh, within the table. Close brackets, so I don't need to enter anything else here. Hit enter, and you can see, because we're using the new dynamic arrays in Office 365, so you need to have Office 365 for this to be working for you, you can see it's done a spilled range. And what that basically means is it's gone through each of those uh, values in our list. So you can see each one of these values at the moment corresponds with that name uh, in that row. And we've got uh, some options here. So we've got a value error if obviously those initials or that BE was not found within the name. But where it is found, uh, so like the bell here, you can see row 27, it's the first, it's returned number one. And what that means is that search term is appeared in the first character of that name. For Sasha Bell, one just below what is very well placed, uh, to give the example, you can see it's given number seven because the BE doesn't happen until character number seven. And so on and so forth for all of our um, options available there. So we want to now just sort of finally tune this. Uh, so we're going to try and rather than have numbers and the error, we want to have this into a simple true or false. In order to do that, we can just use our is, is number function. So I'm just going to revert to our function at the top here and type in is number, open our brackets, and then we just need to enter another close bracket at the end there, hit enter, and you can see obviously it's spilled and updated that for all of those values. 
So what we now have in each corresponding row is a true or false value to tell us if our search value, the BE we've done so far, is present in that row or in that customer name being more specific. So that's great. But we want to now build on this one more step because as great as it is to have the true or false, all we really want is the list of names that our search is applicable to. So we only want the list of names that have the initials B and E in them. In order to do that, we can use our new filter function. So you might have seen this already on our channel in previous videos, but if you haven't, we'll quickly go onto it now and you'll get a brief idea of how that works. So again, another little amendment to our formula at the top here. And I should have said at the beginning, I was gonna be building this out gradually, but we've kind of built it from the inside out. So you can hopefully get a better understanding of how the function is working. So what we need to do now is use our filter. So we'll type in filter, open brackets. So what is our array? So we want to get, this is our array, the customer name. So let's have to select that table one more time. And this is the array, this is the array or the range of names that we want to filter. And the next part for include, so this is going to, well, this is where you'd have to put some logic in to determine what names you want. But by default, what it's going to do here for us is it's going to pull through only the names that meet the true in our second piece of criteria for the is number. So that's working perfectly well for us as it is. So we don't need to do anything there. All we need to do is jump to the end and where it says if empty, if I was to add that comma there. And this is simply if there's no value there um, or we can't get a matching value, what do we want to return? Uh, we want to return uh, not found. So this has predominantly only come up is if we entered a, a string or initials into our report and there was no names uh, that had those values within them, we'd get this message pop up that said not found so we know there's, there's no values in there for us or matching our criteria. Once you hit enter, you can now see you've got a list of names there what match our search criteria. So we've kind of achieved what we've initially set out to do. If I was to go into our report again and let's say let's select some different name so let's even just say s just the letter s go back to master data crack is a few there you, you, but you can see how it's updated um maybe i'll just do another one just to try and get a better idea cl yeah there you go so you can see again it's updated so it's now only showing us the names will have those characters of cl in them as a as a joint together so from this information we've got already we could actually now go and do our drop down list in order to do that, we're just going to use data validation. So we can go into our data tab and go into data validation. We want to show a list because we want a list of obviously the, the names. And then our source is going to be, if I just select that and go to master data, it's going to be this first one here. So F2 for us as you see. So what we're going to need to use here is the new dynamic syntax for spilled ranges. And what that is simply is the hashtag. So what this means is our data validation will first reference master data FT. So obviously this one here, which has Cameron in it at the moment, but by using the hashtag, it will just spill to whatever that range is. So we can see the number of um, names here at the moment. So it's gonna just incorporate all of those names into our list for us. Once you do okay, you can see that we've now got a drop down list that gives us all of these options in here. Uh, well, every single name. One change that we do need to make, I was then gonna quickly jump in and start showing the search aspect. So if we were to put CL, you'll see that we'll get an error message. So this is not ideal because we want to type in a, a search string and to return all of the matching names in our list. So therefore we need to make one little change to our data validation to allow us to do that. Let's just go cancel. We'll return back into data validation and you can see what we've got entered here so far. But we just need to go into this error alert tab and we're going to just untick this show error alert after invalid data is entered. So basically the reason we're getting the error is because CL was not a value in our list. Um, but because we want to use it as search criteria, we just need to untick this just so it's going to allow us to do that in the first place. So if we do OK, by default, our list is going to show us every single name that we have in our list. There's quite a few of them. But if we were to enter the initials CL, and then do our drop down list, we'll only see the names that are applicable to that search. And likewise, the first ones we use, I think with BE, you'll now see only those that match the word BE. So that is how you create a dynamic searchable drop down list 
in, well, I'll say the word dynamic, let's just make it a bit shorter. That is how you can create a searchable drop down list in Excel in using Office 365. The only problem with that is you're limited in the sense that it's only going to be available for just that one drop down list. But what we want is we want to be able to have a drop down list for each one of these cells here. So, what is the solution to allow us to do that? Well, firstly, when we go into our master data, we need to do a quick change here because in essence, what we need is we need this spilled range of obviously the search names for each row of our customer names. So let's just make that a bit easier. So in our customer range, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have 13 potential drop downs here. So we need to have 13 of these validation preps so that there is one validation prep for each customer row. And I hope that makes sense, but if it doesn't, then hopefully it will as we move through this example here now. In order to do that, we we obviously need to have, like I say, we need to have one each, but we can't just copy and paste a validation beneath each one of these, else we'll have a problem of spilled ranges will be spilling into one another. So what we need to do is, rather than have this in a column format, uh, going down horizontally, we, no, going vertically, sorry, we need to change it into a horizontal spilled list. So it goes across here. So then we're able to create each one of these for each row. In order to do so, we can just update our formula here to include transpose. So for those who don't know, transpose will take um, some information like this, what we have in the column format, and it will transform it into a row format. And you'll see as soon as I enter it in here. So all we need to do is just go transpose here open our brackets and just end a closed bracket at the end there and you can see now rather than this spilling down uh, vertically get it right this time it's now going to spill horizontally for us and having just done that i can notice that our data is not in alphabetical order so let's just make that one change as well so just inside of transpose i want to do sort open brackets and then just enter another closed bracket for us at the end here and you can see we've now got a more presentable uh, format here that we can see them in alphabetical order. Well, it just makes that a lot better just when working with data anyway, really. Now that we've done that, we're able to actually copy this down for each of our rows. So we had 13 customer rows in total. So all I'm going to do is drag this down, two, three, four, five, something like that. So what we've we got, we've got reference B8 it was. So we want down to B20. How far did I get? Oh, I've done a few too many. Four, three, two, one. There we go, B20. So you can now see we've got a validation uh, list for each of our rows and our data. For that first one where we've got the initials BE, you can see our list has already been formatted for us. So we've got these uh, five names here. But because all of our other drop down lists are currently empty, that's why we're able to now see the full uh, extent of our customer list in this transposed list. So having done this, we've built all the back-end data that we need. Uh, so we can jump into our report sheet one more time and show you how we can now do this drop-down list to reference those cells. We need to make one quick change. So if we go into data validation once again, into our settings. So at the moment, obviously, it's fixed on this uh, range of F2 with the spilled hashtag there. We just need to remove these dollar signs. So obviously, it's not fixed. And we can copy that down. And let's go OK. And then now what we need to do is control C on that current dropdown, go down as the far as we need to go in our custom range. We'll go paste special, validation, select OK. And now when we go into these lists, we should be able to see what we have. So perfectly at first, we've got the lists that contain all of our names. If we were to go and type in here CL and then do our dropdown, you can see how it's now filtered to those. And let's go to one random one, let's go row 13, and let's go uh, DA. You can see that how this is now updated for all those applicable to the initials of DA. And some of them at first might look, why am I getting DA? Because you might expect to see David or Damien, uh, but obviously you can see the DA is at the end or throughout this text here as well. If I was just to change this to put maybe David, Ah, I've got another good example here. No data is our list, and that's why we then see this value of not found. So a great demonstration of that, because I don't think I actually showed how to do that. And um, so we've now got names available to us. So we can go through and select these either just like this if we want, or we can start typing 
and we'll pick out those only applicable to those as well. So one last thing, because we have got the company uh, column on here as well, how can we pull through the applicable com company for all these names? So let's just actually put some names in here just so it actually does look right. Um, get rid of David and we'll put in here Abraham. So we want to pull in this, the corresponding company for this individual. Very simply, we're going to use another new new function. Uh, if you weren't aware of it, it's called v, uh, not VLOOKUP. Uh, it replaces, you could say, VLOOKUP, uh, but this is called XLOOKUP. So it's a sort of more and better improved, do I say? Uh, but obviously, I'll leave you to decide that. But anyway, we're going to be using XLOOKUP. All we need to do is enter XLOOKUP, open our brackets. So the first thing you do is enter our lookup array, which obviously is our customer name here. We want to look up the customer name in our column, our customer column. So it's going to be that one there. We want to return a value from column B, which is the company column. And at the end here, if not found, we're just going to share return a blank because in theory we could be still populating our data. So we don't want to start trying to pull through things or pull through errors or whatever if um, we're still busy trying to type the information in the first place. If you haven't used XLOOKUP before, there you go, there's a summary on the page, basically how to use it and the criteria you need. As you will see, it's a lot simpler than uh, the VLOOKUP function, but we have done another video that looks at the XLOOKUP in depth. So if you want to check that out, by all means, check out our uh, page on YouTube. You'll find that tutorial and that'll be hopefully give you the insight you need to learn about XLOOKUP. Once you've done that, enter. You can see it's now pulled that company through for us. And we'll just copy this down all those rows, like so. And you can see it's only been populated there. So if we now go and do select a customer from here, and let's use our new search criteria, uh, S, try to think of ones I haven't used, um, S, A, here we go, uh, Sasha Bell. You can see it's now going to pull for that company for us as well. So a little bonus on there as well, in addition to looking at the searchable drop down list. So I hope you enjoyed that video, uh, and it gave you the insight of one, how to use a searchable drop-down list in Excel and also how to extend that so that you can have multiple searchable drop-down lists within the same report. If you did enjoy that video, please do give the video a like. As I said at the beginning of the video, I greatly appreciate it because it shows me the content that you'd like to potentially see more of and it also does help that all-important YouTube algorithm. If it's the first time to the channel or if you're a repeat viewer, please do subscribe to the channel and do make sure you hit that bell notification button so you're notified of our future videos. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video. Oh, and one last thing before I go, uh, links to this document that you have been working on throughout this tutorial, that can be downloaded via the link in the description for this video. So I think that's everything. Uh, thank you very much once again, and yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.